Hello students, today we are going to do class 11th poem, A Photograph by Shirley Towson. Let us read something about our poet. Her full name was Kathleen Shirley Towson. She was an English writer, poet, journalist and local politician as well. Towson attended Priors Field School and worked with the Auxiliary Territorial Service during World War II. She married Norman Townsend, an army lieutenant, in 1944 and they divorced in 1951. She was born on 20th of May 1924, Henley on Thames in United Kingdom, and she died on 23rd September 2018. Shirley Towson's poem, A Photograph, is a tribute to her mother. The poem describes three stages in the passage of time. In the first stage, the photograph shows the poet's mother standing at the beach enjoying her holiday with her two girl cousins. She was around 12 years old at that time. The second stage takes us 20 or 30 years later that is after the snapshot was taken. The mother would laugh at the way she and her cousins were dressed up for the beach holiday. In the third stage, the poet remembers the dead mother with a heavy heart. The photograph revives a nostalgic feeling in the poet. Let us recite the poem. The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling each one holding one of my mother's hands. And she, the big girl, some 12 years or so. All three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera. A sweet face, my mother's. That was before I was born. And the sea, which appears to have changed less, washed their terribly transient feet. Some 20, 30, Years later, she would laugh at the snapshot. See Betty and Dolly, she would say, and look how they dressed up for the beach. The sea holiday was her past. Mine is her laughter. Both cry with the labored ease of loss. Now she's been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. And of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It's silence, silences. Let us now have an explanation of the poem stanza-wise. The first stanza goes like, The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling, each one holding one of my mother's hands, and she, the big girl, some 12 years or so. These are the word meanings for some difficult words. Cardboard here is a very stiff paper board on which the photograph was pasted. Paddling is walking through shallow water in bare feet. And big girl here is the mother. The mother is referred to as a big girl as she was the eldest among the three girl cousins who were at the beach. An old photograph of the mother of the poet which was pasted on the cardboard makes the poet recall the old memories of her mother's childhood. The photograph is a depiction of her mother's enjoyable moments at a sea beach with her two cousins who were younger to her. They were walking in shallow water with bare feet near the beach. The mother, because she was the eldest one, standing in the middle, and she was because in the middle, therefore the two girl cousins of hers were holding her hands. They were standing on each side. The poet's mother was 12 years old then when the photograph was clicked. It shows that the photograph was very old, but the poet has kept it very carefully as it reminded her of sweet memories of her mother's childhood. The photograph also indicates how enjoyable her mother's childhood was. All three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera. A sweet face, my mother's, that was before I was born. And the sea, which appears to have changed less, washed their terribly transient feet. Still here means, you all know, still means without any kind of movement. Smile through, because they were smiling faces, 
because the fast wind was blowing there smiling faces could be seen through their hair which was flying over their faces because they were at the beach and a fast wind was blowing terribly means extremely and transient means temporary that lasts only for a short time the photograph shows that all three girls the poet's mother and her two cousins they were standing still and they were smiling at the camera the camera was held by the uncle in her hands and he was clicking the photograph of the girls at the beach as the weather was very windy at that time their hair was flying over their smiling faces and the expression on the faces of the poet's mother and her cousins was that of happiness and enjoyment the mother was looking very pretty at that time and the photograph was taken a long time ago it shows that long time ago when that photograph was clicked they all were smiling at the uncle they were giving pose for the photograph but she says that was before the poet's birth when she was born after that she never saw her mother laughing or with a smiling face and the sea which appears to have changed less and the sea which the poet could see in the picture is still the same as it was in the photograph and the same water washed the feet of the three cousins who were at the beach their terribly transient feet because human beings feet because they were mortal beings as human beings are mortal so this is the contrast that the poet has tried to show through this permanent unchanged sea and the terribly transient feet of the mother and the cousins some 20 30 years later she would laugh at the snapshot see betty and dolly she would say and look how they dressed us for the beach the sea holiday was so fast mine is her laughter both ride with the labored ease of loss snapshot is the photograph itself dressed us means they were putting on clothes they had got ready specially for the holiday ry means disgusted and labored means achieved after a lot of hard work done with great effort ease means comfort easiness of something so even 20 or 30 years later when the mother would look at the photograph and laugh nostalgically nostalgically means remembering her old times remembering the happy memories of her past even the past made her happy when she remembered it mother would look at the photograph and comment on the dresses worn by the cousins dolly betty and herself dolly and betty are the names of her cousins the mother's cousins sea holiday was her mother's past past a thing of the times gone by and her mother's laughter has become a thing of past for the poet as her mother was now dead as her mother could see that her laughing past smiling past happy past could not come back similarly for the mother the laughing face of her mother was for the poet the laughing face of her mother was a thing of the past as the mother was dead now and she could never see her face smiling face the poet still remembers how her mother would laugh at the photograph remembering the sea holiday with the fondness as well as a sense of loss because that time would never come back in the same way poet feels nostalgic thinking about her mother and her laughter which has become a thing of the past the words labored and ease are opposite to each other but describe the same entity that is loss that means the poet and the mother both had to put in a lot of hard work to make themselves forget their happy pasts easy let's go to the next paragraph now she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived and of this circumstance there is nothing to say at all it's silence silences circumstance means the situation the present the current situation and silences here it's used as a verb that is to make someone unable to speak the poet recalls that it is nearly 12 years since her mother died the poet is consumed with grief full of sorrow but is left with no words to express her loss and pain 
the poet is totally absorbed in memories of her dead mother. The painful silence of this situation leaves the poet speechless. The poet can feel the grief but is unable to express it through words. The silence caused by death makes the atmosphere gloomy where no one is able to utter words. So now the mother is dead and she has been dead for as many years as she had spent as a girl. The poet is lost in grief and of this current circumstance, the present situation, there is nothing to say at all because she is short of words because of being overwhelmed with her emotions for the loss of her mother. Its silence silences. Its means the current situation, the present time and the photograph. The silence of the photograph has silenced the mother and because she does not have her mother with her, that is why she has no company to talk to. The silence of the photograph and the silence of the current situation has made the poet silent. Let us see some poetic devices used in the poem. Allusion. An allusion is a reference or incidental mention of something either directly or by the indirect implication. An example of allusion in this poem is cardboard which actually refers to the photograph. Then alliteration is also used. Alliteration is the repetition of the initial letter, generally a consonant, of several words marking the stressed syllable in a line of poem. Examples of alliteration in this poem are stood still to smile where sir sound is being repeated, terribly transient where ter sound is repeated and its silence silences where sir sound is repeated. Then transferred epithet. A transferred epithet is a description that refers to a character or event but is used to describe a situation or a character. Transient feet is an example of the transferred epithet in the poem. It refers to human feet, but it is used to describe the lack of permanence of human life. Then oxymoron. In this literary device, there are two opposite ideas that are joined to create an effect. Labored ease in the poem is an example of an oxymoron. Labored meaning with great difficulty and ease means comfortably. Both words have opposite meanings, but they are clubbed together. Then there is personification. The example is its silence silences. The situation has been given the human quality of silence. The theme of the poem is that it's a splendid portrayal of the uncertainty of life and death. It introduces the theme of memories and souvenirs into the conversation of mortality. Death is often thought of as the culmination of change while life is brimming with motion. The snapshot is used as a symbol to depict such uncertain but unpredictable change. The first phase begins with the poetess gendering at her mother's photo, which is lying in the cardboard boxes, possibly uncared for some time. It is not dressed in any frame, metal, etc. So it is depicted as being susceptible to forces of decay. The poet's young mother is seen flanked by her siblings who are younger than her. They seemed to be on a swimming trip and the strength of her young mother is highlighted as support for the young cousins. They are looking into the camera when they are photographed by their brother or uncle. They are happy and excited with their flinging locks and winsome smiles. The picture also shows the sea waves lashing at them as the young maidens learn to keep up with the waves. The poetess lingers with the thought that sea, although in motion, has been able to resist the cycle of change even though her mother, motionless in the photograph, has surrendered to her mortality. In the second phase, her mother has grown older and looks back the day at the sea. She remembers her two cousins and relives the day immortalized in the photograph. She enjoys making fun of her and her cousins' attires. The lines have a tone of lamentation, 
as the mother is trying to accept the continual motion of life as she grows older. Harking back at her 12-year-old self maybe was an attempt to return to her childhood, a painful reminder of time and age. In the third phase, the daughter is remembering her mother as she died earlier. The photograph has scripted a memory for both the mother and the daughter and twined them together even after her mother has left forever. She confesses a sense relish at envisioning her mother's daughter, much like her mother relished reliving the day at the sea. The poetess further notices that the time elapsed since her mother's final departure is the same as her age in the photograph, that is 12 years, just a coincidence or an elaborate irony of life and death. Both the mother and daughter eventually learn to accept the change and make peace with their memories, even though they remind them of the transience of happy moments, laughter, etc. Even though death or end makes things go quiet and empty, the poetess found the death of her mother to be loud and stimulating enough to pour her feelings out in form of a tribute and poem. So even though death culminates everything, her mother's death elicited a new response in her. Finally, she accepts silently her resignation to the final silence of death. That's the end of the poem. Thank you.